In our meditation tonight, I'm going to be showing you some things concerning the divine forbearance of God and how it relates to the death of Jesus. A few scriptures I've selected that deal with particular times where God withheld judgment on sin. And I found that there's some kind of connection there with the death of Jesus in there. The first one I'm going to be using here, it's in Acts chapter 14, verse 16. And this particular passage doesn't necessarily accent forbearance, but there is that picture of withholding judgment for a purpose. That is seen in this passage. And it says of God that he, in times past, allowed nations, all nations to walk in their own way. That's all that passage says there. Now starting off, it may be easy to say that mankind had fallen and it, wasn't, it was incapable of retrieving itself or, re or saving itself from the sin that it had fallen into, but getting the human race to realize this was not exactly a simple matter. Mm -hmm. God knew that man would not be able to escape the corruption of sin, however that needed to be demonstrated in some way and for a very prolonged period of time. Now this particular text got allowed nations to walk in their own way. There was a time when very little was revealed. I mean like just like the time of the flood would be one, they got Noah, Enoch, you got like the time of Abraham, that just knowledge was just really sparse. Now what would the Lord show us here in just letting nations, like we're talking like entire countries here, just go their own direction? By letting nations walk in their own ways, he would show us the kind of directions men would take. What would men would men be able to discover God and come and serve him by their own means alone, without him revealing himself to them in some way? Is that possible? What exactly would men do on their own? And of course the conclusion is obvious. Men went in every direction but the right direction. They sought their own personal self-interest. Pagan cultures and gods were made. It only got worse and worse for mankind. No matter how long God waited or allowed this to happen, it just went downhill. So that's kind of like the direction mankind took. That's like something revealed in this. Without God like making some kind of revelation known, man's not going to find it. I mean, just off the bat, so much for the teaching that people can know God through the creation. And I'm sure many of you have heard people say this. I mean, indeed, the scriptures say the heavens testify of God's handiwork. But that doesn't mean that men come to realize Jehovah is God by looking at the grass, the trees, and the flowers. I mean, if that were true, then surely one of these nations would have found it out. However, this was not the case. Men, they walked in their own way. This not only shows the importance of salvation, but shows the importance of revelation. Men were so blind and depraved that they didn't even see how bad their condition was. Some probably didn't even think they, were, they had a condition at all. Thought they were just fine. We're excelling. We're prominent. We don't need help from anybody. We're not in bad shape. We don't need to be saved. They needed to, but they needed to be told what that condition was. God has to make known what the problem is, and he needs to make known what needs to be done about it. So there, in this case, the holding back of judgment was to show the human race how corrupt and sinful it was and that it would not, in fact, come to God without him making himself known to them in some way. It was indeed demonstrated that men have, like sheep, gone astray and gone their own way. The second text I have here is in, also in the book of Acts at 17, verse 30. And this, I believe, can like accent forbearance in some way. It's telling that God, at, t during time of ignorance, he winked. He winked at ignorance for a season. Now what in the world could that mean? Some versions say he ignored sin, he overlooked ignorance, overlooked. I don't personally care for that expression, even though you could technically make it work. Like, overlook, I mean, his eyes go to and fro throughout the earth, something's committed, rather than just staying there and dealing with it, he passes by it, yeah. leaves it unpunished. That, that You can make it work, overlook. However, today, you'll usually hear overlook used to mean like negligence, lack of attention, making a mistake. That's why I don't personally care for that term. But this term winked means that God didn't put like his full focus on the ignorance. He didn't put his full focus on the sin, like closed his eye to it, wink, closed his eye to it. Passed over. I do like that term, passed over it. That would be a good way to put it. However, there's a reason for the forbearance, though. God wasn't just passing over sins for no reason. At this point, I would want to go a little further into the reason behind forbearance. Now, there's a teaching in our time that, like, they say God tolerates 
sin, and I imagine passages like the ones I've used so far could be used to justify that teaching in some way. Usually tolerance is described as just, you know, accepting people for who they are today. This is how it's often portrayed. Often the reason people say God tolerates sin is because, you know, he loves sinners and accepts them. But, you know, more needs to be said than that. Much more. God does love humanity, and he has said he will have all men to be saved and come to knowledge of the truth. We don't deny this. But we must understand that God did not love the world because he accepted it the way that it was. Would God command men everywhere to repent? If he accepted them just the way that they were, that doesn't make any sense. Rather than, man, than God forbearing man's condition due to having a personal attraction to fallen man, God forbears the condition of man due to something he's going to do through Jesus Christ. The forbearance here is therefore not due to accepting mankind, but rather it was due to waiting for a work that, man, that would change men to be accomplished. God knew that the, what the outcome of Christ's sacrifice would be. I mean, that was known from the very beginning, the time he chose Christ for this work. With that being the case, he forbears the sins of the ancients until that change takes place to the death of his son. The last text I have here, it's in Romans chapter 3, verse 25. And this passage here reads, whom God set forth, speaking of Jesus, whom God set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the sins, for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Past through the forbearance of God, here's how another, a few other versions read this. All of them kind of give a different take on it, but all of them are technically correct. New King James says, in his forbearance, God passed over the sins that were previously committed. There's that term, passed over. Another one says, in his forbearance, he had let the sins committed beforehand unpunished. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't, not like he forgot or he just ignored, I mean, he just didn't deal with it at that time. Now, this one says, finally taking care of the sins he had so patiently endured. Now, that's an history take right there, because endured, it kind of accents, it wasn't easy for him just to pass over that. Because his righteousness calls sin has to be punished, so passing over, this calls for a lot of mercy, a lot of grace. <laughs> A lot of favor. There has to be something real big happening on the horizon for him to just, usually God does not do this. There's a bigger cause there. So that, I thought that was fitting. This one says, in his pity, God let the sins of early times go without punishment. Now, it's kind of weak, but I think that kind of accents mercy. He knows the condition of man. He knows they can't save themselves. They know they need, he knows they need his help. And in that, in that case, he's merciful. This one I believe it's pretty good. It says, in his patience, God waited to deal with the sins committed in the past. Now, that, see, that's real good right there. It's not that he's completely just going to forget about, but he's just putting it on hold for the time being. Now, most of these are surprisingly correct in what they say, and it shows that God just didn't, he didn't merely ignore sins committed before the offering of Christ and pretended like they didn't exist. They were dealt with. The sacrifice of Christ is able to reach backward as well as forward. Even those who lived in the law and before it, even during the time of the flood, they're going, to be ex they're going to be affected in some way by the sacrifice of Jesus. This shows how powerful the death of Jesus really was. It had the power to remove all sin, even the sin of the ancients. God forbore the sins beforehand so that he might deal with those sins by placing them on his son. Now this does not just, this is not like bring glory to God. That God was merciful for burying with mankind because of what Jesus would do. I mean, like, imagine how many souls just didn't even know this. Didn't even realize why God was sparing them. Why God was passing over their iniquities. Why he was enduring their sinful condition. Imagine how many generations didn't even know this happened. But real, in, real, in reality, this is what happened. This is why. And how they must be rejoicing now, being able to have this revelation. To know, it's like, oh, now I know why you did that, Lord. Now I know, now I know why you didn't strike me dead. I'm sure there's plenty of saints that rejoice in having this information. Now, to kind of like apply this to you, this can be applied to you as well, brethren. God has been forbearing with you also in view of your salvation. In times past, it says you were without strength, enemies of God, dead in trespasses and sins, children of wrath, children of disobedience, without hope, without God in the world. That's what's said about you. God didn't certainly, he didn't destroy you while in that state, did he? He didn't cut you off. He didn't write you off. What, so what happened to these sins? He dealt with those sins in Jesus Christ. He put them on Christ. And that sacrifice now benefits you. 
and he was forbearing with you until that was accomplished. So it's good to know and be reminded that we have been spared along with many other ancients, souls in ancient times because of the sacrifice of Jesus for our sins. The saints are truly not made perfect without us. Rather, they're made perfect with us. So it's good, like, when you, like, look back on your condition. Some, I mean, people marvel at this. They say, well, how, how in the world did Lord, how did the Lord, like, put up with me? How did he save me in a state like this? Well, there you go. Divine forbearance, that's why. So what's the forbearance? Jesus, that's the reason for the forbearance. So we, pr- we continually praise the Lord for sparing us in such a sinful condition and doing such a great work through his Son. Let us now pray as we partake. Dear Heavenly Father,